Good afternoon. Welcome to the informational meeting on September 14th. Call the informational meeting to order. The first item on our agenda is an update from our city clerk, Deborah Owen. Thank you and good afternoon, Sioux Falls City Council. Uh, one request, we have uh, a need for an inside town hall um, slot to be filled tomorrow at 1230. Is there an available council member who would be interested in doing that uh, show 15 minutes of your time? If not now, perhaps you can contact me after 4 o'clock. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, is there anybody here from Mayor Munson's office who wants to say anything? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, audit committee, no report. Fiscal committee, no report. Land use committee? Uh, we have no report right now, but uh, in two weeks, we're going to be having a, a meeting of the land use uh, committee, and we're going to be talking about deregulation. So if there's anybody that's uh, interested in this issue, please uh, keep uh, that in mind for two weeks from today. So that should be about uh, the 28th of September, I believe it is. And the topic again was deregulation? Deregulation, yes. We're going to be taking a look at that. Oh. We're going to, first of all, start talking about the campground ordinance that was proposed, that increased regulation. And then uh, as a result of the community forums that we have had, we're going to start talking about uh, maybe trying to get rid of needless regulation. Okay. Public Service Committee. We will be meeting next week, and the major issue will be the campaign finance reform that we've talked about, which would mirror state law. I see Justice Han Hamilton in the audience, and you'll be able to be there to discuss that with us, I assume. He's nodding his head, so we will take care of that next Monday at 5 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Um, next is City Council open discussion, and maybe we'll just, I don't know if anybody's got anything, we'll cover the amendments here in a couple minutes. Is there... Any other items the council would like to discuss before we go into the amendments? We have no presentations today. Council Jamison. Deborah, you say you're looking for somebody on inside town hall tomorrow at 12.15. Isn't there something else going on tomorrow at 12? 12.30? I don't know. 12.30 would be the time slot that's available. So if, if you're willing, that would be wonderful. I was just checking to see if there was something else. I knew there was something, but I don't have it in my calendar here. But but I should be able, um, be able to make it. I don't really have a topic. Uh, we could talk about my favorite color, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I should be able to help you. Great. Thank you. Any other open discussion before we go into the amendments? <clears throat> okay. Um, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, regarding the amendments, uh, as far as today for the information, I thought we would just re very, very quickly go through them. There's plenty of them, and to save a little bit of time, we won't necessarily read every one, but we can just uh, call them out, and uh, the sponsor wants to say a few comments to it. We'll have that and ask a few questions, we'll try to keep it fairly quick and move it forward. Regarding tonight, I believe it's been the past uh, most recent history that the uh, counselors have uh, read their own amendments, and then um, if, if seconded, then we'll, discussion will continue, and it seemed to work fairly well last year. And I guess I would just ask that everybody had the same uh, uh, sort of decorum and respect for the system that we had as last year because I thought it went very well. Is there any comments on that or concerns? So we'll read the amendment. If it's seconded, we'll have the discussion. If it's not seconded, we'll move on. Okay. Um, the amendments, as far as um, they go, uh, I'm going to cover them. I thought we'd cover them this afternoon in the order that they are presented on Granicus, which is the order in which they were presented uh, to the clerks, uh, well, starting, I suppose, last week sometime. And the first ones are Councillor Staggers. Um, Councillor Staggers, do you want to yeah, take I'll, it? Okay. I'll just very rapidly yep. go through my amendments. Uh, starting with OSEP Amendment A, if everybody has that. Uh, yep. Uh, what we would do with this one is just delete $17,000 from the sanitary landfill for a message line and then use the $17,000 to purchase snow gates to experiment with those. Um, the next <coughs> amendment is CIP Amendment A. This one here would simply put a joint city county archive. Council Staggers, just one. I think there's a question. Oh, sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> Kermit, I'm just curious. I think we, I know we covered snow gates last year, but can you... Can I guess maybe it's a mm -hmm. 
Can we take an item from an enterprise fund and move it over to a fleet? Is that, I just don't know if that's, uh, if that's legal. That's a good question, and I'm going to have to all take right. a look, I that think, was all. after I, I, this um, informational to see if that's actually coming from an enterprise. It, it might be. Uh, we'll take a look. Thanks for the question. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, the next one is in regard to adding a uh, joint city-county archive uh, building, putting that in the CIP for 2014, and adding $500,000. Basically, this is just to place it in the CIP. That's all it does. And then the new mayor can do whatever they would like with that. Uh, Councilor Staggers, where does the, the amount come from? Uh, I, I don't have a particular source for that at all, but I've had a number of cuts here in these amendments. So. Okay. Um, the next one is deleting $77,000 for removable railing. Um, that's what the Parks Department wants at Falls Park to make it easier for them to paint rails. And I, I think they can do perfectly fine the way uh, the railing we have right now. The next one is, is deleting $200,000 in 2010 for parkland acquisition. Uh, we're uncertain about what's going to happen in 2010 in the economy, so to be very cautious, uh, we would delete that for 2010 only. The next one uh, would be um, in regard to the Arboretum and East Sioux Falls Park development. By starting the three-year development project in 2011 instead of 2010, once again, just delaying from next year, we do not what, know what the economy will be like. Uh, the next one, Amendment E, um, is deleting $902,100 for a new uh, concessions building. Uh, doesn't seem to be appropriate at this time. The next one is t uh, Amendment F, dealing with play court, uh, cyclic reconstruction. Uh, once again, this was supposed to start in 2010, an unknown economy next year. We started in 2011. The next one is the development of play structures. We were supposed to start that in 2010, delaying it for one year until 2011. The next amendment is H, just simply deleting the Prairie Green Golf Course um, Clubhouse of $1,720,100. Um, that doesn't seem like a project we should be doing at this time for a clubhouse. And likewise, Amendment I deals with Hume Park Clubhouse, uh, replacing that for $218,100. Uh, during this time of economic conditions, we should not be dealing with something like that. Um, maintenance headquarter improvements, uh, moving that from 2010 to 2011 because of the uncertain economy. Um, Greenway fishing access, $100,000, just simply delete that. That's Amendment K. Amendment L, um, moving the funds for Arrowhead Park from 2010 to 2011. Is the uncertain economy. Uh, number Amendment M, uh, Pioneer Park Improvements, uh, deleting $145,000 for restrooms at Pioneer Park. Next one uh, is Amendment N, Refrigerated Outdoor Ice System, uh, deleting $829,600. I think we should let Mother Nature continue to freeze the ice. Um, Sue Master Plan Improvements, uh, starting this, this is $3 million, starting this in 2011 instead of 2010 because of the uncertain economy. Uh, Sherman Park Improvements, this was just added this year. This has never been in the CIP before. Is deleting $96,000 for the Sherman Park Overlook Structure. Um, the next one is the um, Amendment Q. Uh, dealing with the bridge across the Big Sioux River instead of destroying the old railroad bridge, which is present there, and building a new pedestrian bridge, all of that amounting to $2,574,480 instead of destroying the old bridge and building a brand new pedestrian bridge, we would spend $175,000 for the construction of the pedestrian bridge over the present railroad bridge. And then uh, Amendment R, um, deleting $427,014 for improvements in the City Hall and City Hall Annex. Um, 
I know there are some people that question uh, the wisdom of continuing to throw money into the City Hall Annex and also even the City Hall. Maybe uh, we should be thinking uh, in terms of a different structure. And then uh, that is the CIP. Then the budget amendment, budget amendment A. Um, budget amendment A uh, would in effect uh, prohibit a property tax increase uh, next year. Uh, using the 3% CPI adjustment. We would not have a property tax increase next year, uh, the first time in decades. Um, amendment B uh, is deleting the red light camera uh, system, uh, deleting the 370000 in revenue and $370,000 in expenditures. Amendment C, um, <clears throat> Eliminating the tree trimming inspection program, uh, deleting expenses of $10,864 and revenue of $19,800. And then we have Amendment D, um, adding $250,000 to allow the city to maintain the trees in the boulevards. Amendment E, deleting $75,000 of expenses and $18,550 in revenue by eliminating the city sidewalk inspection program. Um, and then Amendment F, um, this youth forum, I've never been able to find out what this youth forum is, but each year we spend $18,000 on a youth forum. Delete it. And then delete $35,000. Um, to pay for immigrants' uh, driver education program. And then Amendment H, delete $32,280 um, by eliminating the non-DOT random drug and alcohol testing of city employees. Uh, I guess I've had this before. It's, it's insulting to our city employees without any probable cause uh, conducting drug tests on them. Now, once again, if there's probable cause, that's completely different. Um, the next amendment is I. Um, amendment I is actually clarifying the budget a lot more because uh, the city health department did not include in their budget the $2,318,580 that they receive in Medicaid reimbursement. I'm not quite sure why that wasn't included, but that's simply a statement of, of how much money we receive from um, Medicaid. And then um, Amendment J is deleting the city's portion of $33,600 uh, for the Homeless Advisory Board. Uh, I think we know how that project is going. It's not, we don't need to spend that money anymore. And then the next one is Amendment K, um, deleting $162,182 uh, from the Planning and Building Services Department to eliminate the subsidy for downtown Sioux Falls. Um, Councilor Staggers, what exactly is that subsidy? Well, what happens is, is the planning department simply gives each year in this uh, money to the downtown Sioux Falls organization. So it's a private organization that we're helping to subsidize. And then Amendment L, uh, deleting um, $60,000 from the Sanitary uh, Landfill Department to eliminate the Sustainability Master Plan. Uh, because we have been told that the sustainability master plan uh, envisions coming up with more regulations. Uh, and that's something that people in Sioux Falls have said, maybe we ought to watch this. Uh, we don't want more regulation. Amendment M is $47,400 from the Sanitary Land uh, Fill Department to eliminate the pipeline repair and maintenance. We have a brand new pipeline. Uh, we don't have to spend the 47.4. It looks like it's part of a maybe a slush fund. Um, number, no, amendment N is deleting $6,000 from the Sanitary Landfill Department by eliminating the landfill garbage service. They can do it themselves. And then amendment O uh, is to delete $150,000 from the uh, Planning and Building Services Department to eliminate the Historic Facade Program. So that's uh, amendment O. And that's all my amendments, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Okay, are there any uh, questions on any of those amendments for Councilor Staggers? It was very quick. Uh, Deborah, did you have anything on that first one? Actually, uh, Councilmember Staggers, if you will, what, what mm -hmm. we, I just ran and had changed on the OSEP amendment 
was to take that money from fleet, uh, a pickup, and then to put it back in the same amount. Um, it was hard to tell from the OSEP book what was identified as sales tax and enterprise funds mm -hmm. on that itemized page. Yes. And so keeping the intent of your, uh, your amendment, I'll offer that as a, as a change. Okay. It's being done now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deb. I'm sorry. Not, I'm not sure I understood that. It, so we're instead of taking it from sanitary landfill? Which, yeah. And actually, the OSEP doesn't necessarily indicate that the sanitary landfill dollars are enterprise and not sales tax dollars. We don't get that from the page. But um, just moving money around in fleet is what uh, I ended up doing for Council Member okay. Staggers. Once again, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Don't see any. We'll move into my amendments. Um, <laughs> the first two, A and B, are related. Uh, the only difference being is if we were to amend the capital program, but it simply adds to the um, uh, language to the budget that if the uh, mayor's budget, uh, if the sales tax revenues continue to fall short, um, in the coming months in the next year that we will get an update uh, on the contingency, contingency plans uh, by the administration on what their contingency plans are. So A is if there are uh, essentially no amendments to the capital program. B is if there are amendments. So that's the only difference in the two there. Then um, just a language change. Just a language difference, yep. And actually, um, yeah. That's all it is, the language. Then on C, <clears throat> okay, um, as far as C goes, there's C and D are uh, likewise related. I don't believe that the uh, sales tax that are budgeted uh, for the 2010 is a 4% growth. I simply don't think that that is realistic in today's economy. Um, we know through uh, August 31st that uh, 2009 that we are 3.6% down in sales tax. The current budget assumes a 2% growth in 2009, so that's a spread of where we are today at 56 and then to put a 4% growth factor in 2010 makes it essentially a 9.6% uh, difference in sales tax. And I believe that that is uh, not achievable. And that's all in the course of between October 31st, 2009 and December 31st, uh, 2010. So within a 16-month time frame, we're talking about going from 3.6 negative 2% growth and then a 4% growth, and so it's almost a 10% increase, and I just don't think that's realistic. So what I have done is um, prepared an amendment that would eliminate, essentially eliminate the 4% sales tax growth. Now it leaves in, um, I think we heard, uh, was it last week from Assistant uh, Finance Director uh, Tom Huber that the administration believes they have a, a reasonable chance or 50, 50 chance at least of having a break-even year with 2009 because of, obviously, our sales tax are way low, um, but because of some additional bank franchise fees and um, some cost savings, um, things that they have implemented, and some savings in wages, that they will have a reasonable chance of breaking even. So assuming that, um, I want to just basically eliminate the 4% uh, for 2010. And what we have here, uh, the first one, D, is for the general fund only. And the next one, I'm sorry, I misspoke. C is for the general fund only, and D is uh, for the general fund and the CIP. Now, unless there is a um, indication from the council this afternoon, I do not intend to bring uh, the, the latter one that includes the CIP. And the logic there, and, and for the public, just so you know, um, the general fund has an unreserved fund balance uh, associated with it. So if there is a shortfall, they can go into the unreserved. The CIP has no unreserved fund balance. So we could adjust the CIP down to uh, take away that same 4% because obviously the first penny generates as much as the second penny but we're, I'm not proposing to adjust the second penny simply because 
uh, the administration can only spend what it brings in. And so it cannot spend more than that. So I believe they already have prioritized their capital programs uh, in 2010, and we will leave that alone and let them come up with uh, further prioritizing to determine which projects they're not going to build, similar to how they have done this year. I think there's $5.6 million in the current uh, CIP budget that they have held back, projects that they have held back because the sales tax has not been coming in as planned. So um, unless there's any sort of uh, indication from the council that they would like that, um, and I guess you can uh, bring that up to me later if you so wish, but uh, I do not intend to bring that. So I just intend to bring uh, the one that adjusts the uh, general fund down. It's uh, $1,843,000. Uh, is the 4% is basically what the 4% is. So that being said, uh, those are my amendments. Any questions? Bernie? I'll take mine next then because it is actually similarly related. Uh, what this does is a new methodology for budget projections, uh, something we've not done in Sioux Falls before. And in, gives a more accurate pro projection of where we should be in sales tax growth, I think. Um, the administration bases the 2009 sales tax figures. Uh, those numbers are not even in yet, so we don't know where that will be and then saying 4% above that. So this is similar to, to Pat's amendment, except that this is based on actual sales tax numbers that we know came in in 2008. So you take the first penny, and uh, which brought in about $45 million in 2008, we project a 1% growth for 2009, which may be optimistic, and then project 1% above that for 2010. That decreases the total 2010 budget by $1.8 million from the mayor's proposed budget. We're still likely to need to identify holdbacks, um, but I think that's probably a good practice to do anyway. And uh, $1.8 million I don't think is, is a huge cut in the sense that typically our departments return about 5% of the operating budget back anyway. I just have one question, uh, Councilor Brown. The, um, um, we just got your amendment now, and it appears that there's some $5,000 difference between our two amendments. That's your intention? Let me look at the numbers between the break and check that out. Okay. Should we move on to Councilor Anderson then? Or? Yes. Okay. Councilor Anderson? Okay. Um, I'll be bringing forth an amendment to uh, create uh, a capital project for about $50,000 for affordable housing. Uh, the amount to be uh, funded by uh, either acquisition, the acquisition uh, projects in the budget or after conversations with the mayor um, finding other funding and that will be decided here at a later time. I have one question for you, uh, Councilor Anderson. The um, the fifty thousand dollars. How can you expand on what the study will do or what it will be? Sure. Um, this would be a study to find out uh, people, location, uh, putting together uh, an affordable housing plan, uh, working with the mayor and Jim Schmidt from Sioux Falls Housing, uh, also with Councilman's. Brown, Litz, and Jameson, uh, it was determined that we needed to do a feasibility study first to move forward with uh, funding an, an actual large-scale affordable housing project, and that we needed to put this together so that we could move forward on that. And again, who, who was going to do the study? Um, we think uh, the CCOG is going to be instrumental in it, and then they may have a consultant that they need to hire. We're not certain at this point, Pat. Uh, it involves a financial study, the land acquisition study, the cost of development study, uh, who the market would be, the absorption rate, uh, uh, you know, how long the plan would take to implement, and the impact that it would have, who would be the market. There's a, a, a whole bevy of, uh, of aspects of it that we need to find out about before we... Uh, move ahead with it. And as we've stated before, if we're going to, you know, actually do something about affordable housing in Sioux Falls, except talk about it, that this is where we need to start. 
We have had conversations uh, between ourselves with interested parties, the mayor and his administration, and this is what we've come up with at this point today. Okay. There's, uh, there's lawyers, uh, there'd be legal fees, there's uh, CPAs uh, that would be involved with it. There are also uh, engineering fees that would be involved with it to tell us exactly where we would be as with, it, uh, with a certain scenario. Okay. And in discussions up to today with the mayor, he is fully supportive of this action. All right. I see we were handed uh, your update, uh, or the new version of the Staggers mm -hmm. Seventh Amendment. <clears throat> Anybody has any questions on that? Kermit, I thought yes. in Snowgate we're going to go on one of these new pickups. Well, I tell you, the, the city is purchasing a number of pickups, so we we most likely put them on graders, though. Okay, I got you, Kermit. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a question, too, Kermit. Yep. How many are these $17,200? How many are these going to purchase? Yes, this, this would probably purchase about three, two to three of these snow gates. And once again, the purpose behind this is to experiment with to see how snow gates would work in Sioux Falls. Uh, some communities have had good experience with snow gates, and uh, other communities uh, have not. So we could uh, find out uh, how this could work in Sioux Falls. Any other uh, questions on any of the amendments or comments or general open discussion? Okay, I guess we have none. We will oh, just. I'll give you one. I'll give you one as long as we're sitting here. What do we got? Five o'clock for the next one. But we got 35 minutes. Uh, the snow gates. I'll start with that. With that one. Well, first off, I guess are we going to go tonight in the order that we have them here? The, um, this is the order that we just went through today. Is the order that they were presented to the clerks, and I thought that that was the most. Would, would you guys think that's the way to go? Is that? I think it's been how we've done it in is the past. All, is it? I mean, I guess it, this is okay uh, with me uh, because I think it must, makes it much easier for the clerk to, to get the amendments in order. So, uh, but if anybody wants to do it a different way, that's okay too. Okay, uh, I was just going to try to address Kermit's stack here, if I could, or ask Kermit maybe to give us a. I think with every item you discussed, how the economy affected each one of your decisions on this. Uh, is there anything else you want to add to the Well, purpose the ones that I am um, delaying, like from 2010 to 2011, yeah, the, the economy was definitely in my mind that uh, it would be wise for us just to delay it uh, one year. And I don't see any real pressing concerns on those particular uh, amendments to do it, you know, begin next year. Uh, we can go ahead and start in 2011. And another thing that's really advantageous in that is to give the new mayor, whoever that's going to be, you know, a real break here in, in dealing with the, the uh, CIP budget. Uh, they're not going to have to scramble around as much uh, as is, you know, if we would leave many of these projects in place for 2010. So uh, then the new mayor, whoever that is, can, you know, uh, deal with the CIP a lot easier. I, if I might comment on that, um, I... I fully understand uh, the logic behind that, uh, Councilor Stagger, so I guess I would just point out that, again, as with my amendment, I believe also with Council Brown's, um, you know, we're not adjusting the CIP, but as we know, the, the CIP, the, the mm -hmm. administration can only spend what comes in, and they're going to be forced to, as, as if I think most of us suspect that the, the sales tax is not going to come mm -hmm. in as fast as maybe they anticipate, um, that they are going to have to um, Reevaluate and reprioritize those projects, and sure. uh, that that very may well be accomplished, anyways. Well, you know, I suspect uh, that would be the case, but there's one advantage to this, and that advantage to this is we would be making the decision. Yep. That's that's the major difference. Any other questions or? All right, maybe you got Brown and Stay or Brown and Costello. You guys have one that's pretty similar. Could you guys articulate maybe the difference so that we don't have to do it so much later? Or, I mean, if we well, pass all of Kermit's, for instance, where would we be on? Um, well, um, yeah, uh, our, 
just correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but our amendments essentially are the general fund only. They're not CIP. So Councilor Staggers has a bundle that is uh, general fund related and a bundle that is capital improvement program. So obviously it won't affect that. Um, they affect it differently. Uh, probably the, some of the biggest ones would be uh, the property tax increase. If that were to pass, uh, that would take a million dollars out of the general fund. And the interesting thing on that is that that will have a uh, compounding effect as the years go on because it will be a million dollars this year, a million dollars next year, compounded and so forth. Um, Council Brown and I's uh, amendment is uh, uh, reduces the growth essentially. Uh, there's a little bit slightly different mythology to how it came about, but there essentially uh, reduces the general fund uh, 1.81843 in my case, and I think it's 1838 for Council Brown's, uh, reduces that general fund. So, uh, Councilor Staggers, uh, I think, amendments typically reduce the amount of spending, and so that would uh, typically fall in line with that, except for the property tax. That would take another uh, million dollars out of the uh, revenue stream. Let me also mention, if I can, about this compounding of the million dollars this year, next year, and so forth into the future. That's absolutely right. But I guess the way I look at the compounding, it's compounding savings for, for the people of Sioux Falls. So this year they'd have an extra million dollars to spend instead of the city of Sioux Falls. The following year they'd also have that million again to spend. So uh, there is definitely a compounding effect. But I think it's a positive compounding effect. If I may clarify on, on mine, it is strictly a methodology difference. Instead of just guessing at what uh, the projections might be for this year or next year, it bases it on real hard numbers from 2008 and then goes from there. That's the only difference. And the growth revenue that you have are exact? Pardon? The estimate growth? The Honestly. estimated growth for 2009 would be 1% based off the hard number from 2008 right. and then 1% off of 2009's number, whatever that, to 2010. Right. Okay. So it's something less than 2%. So Vernon, you're basing yours off of 2008's numbers. Uh, Pat, you're basing yours off of? I'm basing mine off of the, um, from what, uh, it comes out of the uh, finance department and what they believe is a realistic shot to have a balanced budget uh, in 2009 uh, where revenue uh, and expenses will balance and there won't be a need for unreserved fund balance, although there, there may be or maybe a little extra, there may be a little bit into it. But mine is simply uh, just says that there's 0% growth in sales tax for uh, 2010. That's all mine doesn't take any other uh, anything into account other than zero percent sales tax growth for 2010. I guess we'll have a discussion with Gene, but I was going to ask if uh, I think you said that moving forward as proposed, we would have a, in essence a 10 percent growth rate. Right. If you um, through August 31st, we're three and a half percent down yeah. in our sales tax receipts. The administration has a 2% um, calculation in their 2010, I'm sorry, in 2009, the current year. Okay. So they've adjusted that down. They've held from the 6.5% originally down to 2%. So that 35 to 2% is a 5.6 spread. And then in 10 is a 4% growth, which makes it a 9.6 spread. So that's where between August 31st in December 31st of next year in that 16-month time frame, um, I think it's uh, unachievable. I think what Council Brown has done is he's taken 1% in 9 and 1% in 10. Well, that's the same 2% that the administration has for 2009, so it's, that's why the numbers are so, so close. I'm just or go ahead. Maybe just to, to give you a, a little sense of background, uh, in this finance department, what they've done is averaged over all the years what the sales tax growth has been. That's how we ended up at those seven and a half, six and a half. Well, those have been proven not to be very accurate. This method that I'm proposing bases it off the actual numbers of 2008. And every budget 
is a bit of guesswork. But at least we're starting with something solid that we know um, happened two years ago, or 2008, and, and moving forward with slight uh, increases. So I think it's a more reasonable approach than taking an average and just saying six and a half, seven and a half percent this year, four percent based on the economy. I think it's a little more scientific approach. I'm just thinking of how we started this year off with six percent projected growth. Six and a half. Six and a half projected growth, and we're essentially flat. So here's an example of us starting too high and ending lower. And I guess how we've gotten here today is an example of probably how we would do that in the future. Has there been a problem with how we've gotten here that we're trying to avoid? I guess I'm trying to figure out what we're really up to here. Are we trying to fix a problem that we couldn't overcome like we did in this cycle, or is there something else? I think that cities that have used this method have been more accurate in their budget projections uh, when, when they've come to the end of the budget year, they've been closer to the mark than we have. Okay. I would say that, uh, um, you know, budgets are the, your best estimate. When you're preparing a budget for your business, you, you try to take all things into consideration and uh, come up with a reasonable forecast so that you can control your costs and, and uh, make your improvements based on a, a, a methodology that's been well-reasoned. and. While the administration certainly, you know, when we pass this budget today or tonight and then uh, do the appropriations uh, next week, um, the administration will no doubt start immediately on the 2011 budget. And I don't know exactly when they had to put their forecast in, their sales tax growth forecast in, but I imagine it was back in uh, February, March, or April or sometime. And at that time, uh, it may have been reasonable. I think at that time we were running up 1.7 percent in our sales tax growth. So that uh, to uh, think that in 2010, 4 percent growth would be reasonable, it was, it was not far from a stretch. And particularly if you uh, pay attention to what the economists were telling us at the time, um, it was a reasonable assumption. You know, fast forward some five months down the road, we simply have more accurate information available to us than what the administration had when they originally proposed this. I don't think there's any fault on the administrations for presenting the budget that they have. It's just that we have more accurate information today, and it's incumbent, I think, uh, you know, our responsibility to put forth what we believe to be more accurate. Now, I guess if somebody thinks that those are achievable numbers, then, then you wouldn't want to support the amendments. But um, somewhere in there, uh, I think, uh, you know, at least a certain number of people would agree that uh, to swing 10 percent in 16 months is not likely. I'll just add, they, they could have changed their 4 percent at the last minute, couldn't they? Uh, I, I'm, they're not, I mean, they're not just stuck back in March. Well, I, you know, I, I just want to make sure we're fixing something here and we're not just... Uh, you know, they, they certainly, I, I, you know, they probably could have. I think they... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but we didn't, didn't we get the, the capital program in uh, uh, July and then the uh, general fund in August? So, um, yeah, they could have changed it. I imagine that probably would have uh, caused a little bit of uh, consternation on that part, but after they've been working on it so long. But certainly they could have uh, changed it. But, uh, you know, we're in September here and we're getting close. So I, I, it's a reasonable change to me. Any other comments or questions on any of the amendments as proposed? Any other open discussion? I guess I'm going to ask if uh, yourself and Vernon, since both your amendments are so close, if maybe you can we, we'll, we'll talk discuss about that, that after, later. After the meeting, try to <laughs> yes. see what we figure out what we come up with. Thank you. Any other comments or open discussion? <laughs> Okay, we will adjourn, and we have a uh, joint, uh, as a reminder, a, a unscheduled or not rescheduled meeting, I guess, with the uh, Minneapolis County at 5 o'clock. So we are adjourned.